and a half years, and yeah, I've, uh, I've done a life for Aberdeen since I was born in 71. The smoking ban was still in effect as well, so the shops used to be obviously, as you say, dingy, very smoky. Yeah. It was quite a sort of, I think it was seen as a seedy sort of uh, pastime. People would go into bookies to get away from their wives or whatever. And those were very respectable. So the shops were changed very much. Um, we didn't have these machines in those days when I first started. They just kind of last like five or six years. The shops are very different how they're, they're set up now in terms of how much more well lit. It's been darker in the past, how much more well lit. There's no more of these shops that are open plan. So, yeah, very different. Yeah. Well, a lot different to what it is today. Um, for one thing, you couldn't see inside them, they were all blacked out. Yeah, it was illegal to be able to see inside. There would be no televisions. Again, it would be illegal to have televisions in the shop. Uh, there would be no screens that would have the prices on. We just have customers listening to an audio commentary and the people behind the counter, the managers etc would be taking down the results from an audio commentary as well. We also had a board and a person to mark the board and the mark down the prices as they changed. The, the new way I think, if I remember it, um, on occasion when you just clean the shop yourself, you had to clean the ash trays and that was a pretty disgusting job and you find you know, chewing gum in there as well with all the cigarette ends, which is pretty horrible and that you know, used to go home at night and smell your shirt and your clothes and Stinking of smoke. That was the first thing that struck me when I went to start the job. It was very smoky. Very smoky. Yeah, I think the, the actual customer base as well would be predominantly male, um, and that's where smoking went with the sort of territory there as well. Yeah, they tended to be older than they are now. There weren't many young people when I started because we didn't do, it was mostly <coughs> horses and dogs, we didn't do a lot of football. They look at the figures, they reckon that these things, I think about half the the money now that the bookies, the bookies take, which a big change from when I first started, it was mostly horse racing and greyhounds that you took. Football played a small part, but now football is a lot bigger as well than it used to be, plus these things as well. People did the um, Little Woods and Vernon's pools, the pools coupons then, more so than the fixed odds that we had. And we didn't do nearly the amount of football we get now. I think it's probably the variety of products we've got now. Um, Whereas, as I already said, we wouldn't have had very many coupons for a start. We've now got a range of probably 20, 25 coupons, whereas in the past we would have had maybe two coupons. Um, we're betting on various for scorers, etc., as well, that we wouldn't have done before. Uh, I suppose that the major change in the shops is we've got these machines in the shops now, which are attracting some people, young people, into the shops as well. There's also the football and TV now. I mean, there wasn't Sky when I first, there wasn't anything like that. So there wasn't all that much football on the TV. A, a two part Ben it was a white copy and a blue copy. So you'd write on the top copy what your bet was, and to the member of staff, and they would put it through until pushing the amount of much stake was. Split the, the bet, give you your back your blue copy, and keep the white copy, and then hand that to the manager, and the manager would, during the settle that bet himself, he'd go through, if it was a horse bet, he'd go through the races and find the results, and settle the bet using that he's bringing or using the, the machines that were had. When I started it was eight and a half pence in the pound. It was, I believe it was nine percent when I first started. So that when you put a pound pound bet on, you had to pay a pound and nine P. Otherwise you would take the tax off your winnings which obviously you wouldn't pay tax before you put your bet on. Um, well, I would say, as I said before, it's predominantly would have been male. If you saw a, a woman in a bet shop, more, more than likely they'd be behind the counter. Um, it'd be very rare for you to see ladies in the shop. Although you would get one or two, but not, not very many. Well, when I started, it was next. I was bingo next door because I worked in Ladbrokes and Guild Street, and there was bingo in the Tivoli, and uh, that was on a Wednesday, I think. And we had quite a few women came in for after the bingo. Very few women at all. 
I think it's slightly better than this, obviously brought a few more women in, which uh, is totally different when I first started. And as well, I think that you get a lot of younger, younger guys these days with the machines and with all the football betting that we've got. I mean, I think when I first started, it was mostly older guys just coming and put in their, their horse bets every day, come in, have a chat with you, put the horse bets on, go home and watch the racing, or actually in the shop and watch the racing. But now it's a lot more, I think, people coming in, different age range, put on different types of bets as well, instead of football and machines or whatever. So it's different, different clientele from when I first started. I think it's, it's a much better environment I think people come into, for the first time, they kind of come into the shop and it's going to be quite surprised at how nice it is. I think if bookmakers had stayed the way they were, and I don't think there'd be many bookmakers left on the high street, um, obviously all companies have got to kind of grow, and by developing a different type of product, uh, longer opening hours, different days of the week they were open, in, the, in, the, in those days in the past we would have been closing quite early in the, in the winter, there'd been no product yeah. and there'd been no evening racing etc. Um, we weren't allowed to open beyond five o'clock in the in the winter. We had to close by half past six in the in the summer as well. So we were not open in the evenings. So we've just had we've extended the kind of product that we've got, extended when people can bet. So that obviously is going to be able to attract a different type of person. We used to open I think three nights a week during the summer and we close usually maybe five half past five at night. Open at I think it was Half past nine, ten o'clock in the mornings. But obviously now we like to take our shops open half past eight or ten o'clock Monday to Saturday and nine till half past nine on Sunday. So I think as years gonna go, I think more shops will be open in longer hours. I can see midnight happening and then possibly twenty four hours in the future as well. I would imagine there'll be more progresses in technology, so it's um, things like self service bed terminals that we have in some of our shops. I think they'll probably become more the phone in all the shops. Um, obviously the big developments in the games we have and also the, the types of products that we're offering on the, in the actual shops itself. There are, there are, there's no real need for somebody to leave their house at the moment to put a bet on. Um, they can bet on the internet or they can bet on the telephone. Um, but some people will like the actual social interaction in. Uh, as I said before, they can meet, meet their friends in the shop. Um, although it's more probably more convenient to do it for some people on the computer, we do get people that will come in yeah, some people are well. quite lonely and it's sort of a, it's how they, they plan out their day, it just yeah. gives them something to do. It's also, it also gives people the, the satisfaction of actually having the cash in their hand rather than having to wait two or three days for the money to put credit back to their account. And it obviously feels like real money if you've got it in your hand. The, a lot more of these machines, well, if they get more, I think they can, you can get more, obviously these machines in all the shops. You may get, we can open in, I think, more shops just perhaps for these machines. You're going to get, I think, less hot racing better because more of the other guys are going to die off as the years go on. So I think the machines and the football are probably going to be the two big things I think are going to push the industry forward. I think you're going to see a lot more uh, sale orientated bookies not in to recently come to them. There'll be a lot more good, I think, in terms of coming out and speaking to you and trying to push their product towards you. See yourself. <laughs>